How you doing, everybody? <clears throat> we're gonna fin- we're gonna continue where we left off in the book uh, "Restore My Soul," and uh, so it's part two here. Hope everybody enjoys. It's uh, short but sweet, very sweet. So that's what everybody's looking for. Get to the point, enjoy, and you know get your get your fix for the day. <laughs> and we will move forward with it as well. Okay, here we go. Um, so before we were talking about how to transcend, sorry, how to how to traverse the paths, how to go, how to how to go through the ups and downs in life, okay, and that's how you're able to return to God. If you're able to deal with the ups and the downs, right? So we were very clear. You need to deal with ups and downs in life. That's right. I need to deal with ups and downs in life. That's part of the serving God. God says, if I have enough service from the, from the angels, why, why do I need you? Ah, you have to deal with the opposing will. You have to deal with their good inclination and, and, and bad inclin- and inclination that's hard. So, so when, you're dealing, when you're dealing with your evil inclination and your good inclination, so it, the, the angels only have one will. They only have one inclination. Whatever God says, they do. We have two. So we, that's where you get the movies and the, and the TV shows where you have the angel on one side and the angel on the other side. And basically they're, they're, they're arguing with each other. That's what's going on in a person's head and their heart. Um, so we have to understand through all the tugging and pulling one way and the other that we're trying to choose God's path no matter how we feel, no matter what's happening. And, and he's going to give us advice how through choosing that path in every situation we're on and to realize we're, we're on that path and we want to stay on that path, whether whether it's hard or whether it's easy or whether we're, we feel inspired or whether we, whether we feel desperate so so that we can continue to find and grow, find more amazing things in life. OK, so let's just jump into the next the next spot. OK, this is the part two, um, the essence of God's greatness is that even those who are farthest from him can still draw near to his service. Okay? That through this, God's name is glorified and exalted in the worlds above and the worlds below. It follows from this that no one should ever despair of drawing close to Hashem's service on account of being far removed from God because of the many sins the person may have committed. This is even true if the person has committed the gravest, the worst things in the whole face of the world that it says you can't come back from. On the contrary, it is through this person more than anyone else that God's glory is elevated, praised, and magnified. In essence, it is through the tzaddikim of the age that those who are far can draw close to God. Okay, there's a lot of nice uh, principles. We'll go over the um, most important thing. The people are further. God wants to see the people furthest from God. Furthest from Him. Drawing close. Okay? Rabbi Natan Abretzov brings down in his Lakut HaLachot. Sorry if you hear my baby in the background and with my wife. Um, uh, and it says in Lakut HaLachot, Rabbi, Na, Rabbi, Nassan, Rabbi Natan Zatzal, uh, who passed away uh, a couple hundred years ago, Rabbi Nachman's main student, brought down that the main reason we're, we're brought down to this low world, really, we're like right next to Abba. Our souls originally where they come from, just right next to Abba. They've, it feels it and knows it. It doesn't want to go away from Abba. It doesn't want to go away from, from Hashem. It doesn't want to go away from your, from, from God. Not, no, no way. Then it gets sent down to this low, low world. It feels like all the tests you're going through, everything you're going through. I don't, you don't even know what the heck you are. Okay? So, so you have to understand, as God said, basically, Rabbi Natan, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Natan says, in heaven... So the soul generates a certain, like let's say, four million watts of of desire for God. It loves being God, but then it gets sent to this world, and it feels so far away from anything pleasant. Even if you have an ice cream, it only lasts for like you know twenty minutes, and then and you know, and then and then you and you go forward with your life, and then you have another thing lacking. But when you're with God, when when you're with God, you feel this wow, this unbelievable thing. Like that's what I'm missing. So even in this world, and in this world, when in this world, when we're sent down to this world, not to generate 4 million watts of desire for God, we're so much further away from God in this low physical world because it feels that way, especially, okay? But actually, God is really here just as much as anywhere else, 
okay? But it's hidden from us so much. That's that's the test of this world. And and in this world, when we're when Hashem is hidden, so if it, we Hashem wants us to generate even more desire for him. The further you are, is showing you how that's how that's to that degree incongruent to the degree incongruence to the degree that you feel distance that's the degree that you should turn on your desire so the further you are the more you should want god really that's really one of the biggest secrets so we find that the torah itself okay um the torah itself when yitro came to greet his father-in-law, Jethro, came to greet him. He says, now I know that God is above all gods. It says in Shemot, it says in Exodus, right? That he was the high priest of all the idols in the world. And he, and he dropped all of them because of what he heard and, what he, and what he, the truth that he found. And he served everything. And he said, now I know God, the God of Am Yisrael, of the, of the Jewish people, are the, are the, are, are the, are, is the God of everything. Is the God of all gods, so to speak. The, all the gods that he was serving, that he thought he was serving before Okay, so we have to understand on that Parsha, on that portion, that's when the Torah was given. The Torah was given when the people, the person who was the furthest away from God is being drawn close to God. It doesn't matter if the person was a murderer. It doesn't matter who the person was. Okay, I want to let you people know that. Uh, people know that, that actually here in Israel, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of, they have like, prisons inside they have like yeshivas they have places where people can learn there are people there are people that are learning inside prisons maybe more than just as much as people learning inside uh um like in this in civilized in the civil civilized society because because in that place they have nothing else to do but they eat three meals a day and do nothing and there they can learn there they can grow there can change here in israel we have rabbis that go there and help people do tshuva within the Within the um, within the system, okay, and it's and and that that's one thing. That's one thing. But there are many other things as well. But we have to understand that that how tremendous that of a thing that is to be able to take. The, for me to say, okay, it's I know difficulty in one thing, okay. For me to come close to Hashem in that thing, it will take a lot. I need I need years. I need some time. For someone else, like we just spoke about, it might take them twenty, thirty, forty years, okay. To be able to come close to God, maybe their whole life in that one thing alone I'm talking about, okay? So it's very, very difficult, and they feel so far away from God. How do you deal with something that you know for 70 years you made it accomplish? How do you do that? That's That takes real desire, real willpower. How do you do that? How do you do that? That's why it's so important. That's why it's so big. So the person who's God has the potential actually to, to draw the closest, really. And so where you feel the, for even, and then the same thing with yourself, the furthest places that you feel from God within yourself, the parts of yourself that you feel furthest away from God, those are the parts, parts that God says, I want to see what's your desire to come, come close to me when those things, because that's your real measure of closeness. Really, Hashem's like, I know you're far. You know you're far. The question is, I know you're far. You know you're far. The question is, what are you going to do now? Are you good despite all that? Are you going to yearn for Hashem? Because Hashem says, God says, this is my desire. That's my sweetness. Is that you want to come close to me. That's the main thing. The first thing, everything follows your desire. If, which is a desire to accomplish a goal. Okay, like Kobe Bryant, we know just passed away. Such a desire, we find out when he first wanted to uh, NBA, he wanted to, he wanted to be just like Mike, just as good as Mike. Michael Jordan, MJ, okay? And he said, I'm going to be just as good as that. And people thought he was nuts, and he did it because of his willpower. We have to understand the willpower of a person is their energy. It's your fuel line, okay? And that's what we're reading here. Even if you committed the worst things in the world, in the world we said, on the contrary, it is through this person more than anyone that God's glory is elevated and magnified, and ha and how is this possible? How is a person able to learn this? Learn this lesson. Learn this lesson. You have to listen to the righteous people of the age. The true righteous people of the age, are will show you. No matter how far you've come, no matter how far you've fallen, no matter how far you've risen, you can you can return to God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's there's nothing stopping a person. Says, per, person says, listen to this. The person says, I've reached so far. I can't reach anymore. I've done the best I can. I've done the best I can. Hashem says, no, there's still more to grow. There's still more infinity. The, the infinity is in, is, doesn't stop. And 
And therefore, you need to cultivate the desire to constantly grow. When you're up, you have to constantly grow. When you're down, you constantly grow. And we're trying to find the right mindset. And we realize we judge ourselves favorably. Look what we're writing here, right here. What's written in the Kutimran Lesson 10. That's from Rabbi Nachman right there, That what we just read. That based off of Rabbi Nachman. That no matter how far away, the furthest you are, is showing you you have an opportunity, being so far, whatever it is, take this opportunity. Realize it's special. What are you going to do now with your free choice? You're going to want Hashem? You're going to stop? You're gonna, are you going to stop? If you're going to want God, you're going to desire God, you're going to desire God, help me. If that with your help, you can bring me to the highest places, no matter where I'm coming from, I, you, you could, and I can progress along the path towards you, God, to do real repentance, eternal repentance, something I'm, I'm not stopping. Even if I fall, even if I rise, it doesn't matter. I'm coming closer to you, God. God said, you understood. why. This is why I put you here. You don't stop yearning after him. And you need to cultivate. We need to be encouraged. We need to get friends that help us stay with a group of people like this that, that can encourage us continually. And may everybody enjoy and uh, be encouraged and grow and share and like. And uh, I'll see you next time with the next lesson for part three. Hope you enjoyed part two. Have a beautiful day.